The Baha'i Faith was first mentioned in the United States in 1893 at the World Parliament of Religions in Chicago. Soon after, early American converts began embracing the new religion. Thornton Chase was the most prominent among the first American Baha'is and made important contributions to early activities. One of the first Baha'i institutions in the U.S. was established in Chicago and called the Baha'i Temple Unity, incorporated in 1909 to facilitate the establishment of the first Baha'i House of Worship in the West, which was eventually built in Wilmette, Illinois and dedicated in 1953. Abdul Baha, head of the Baha'i Faith after his father Baha'u'llah, founder of the faith passed away in 1892, visited the United States and Canada in 1912, ultimately reaching some 40 cities from April to December. He spread his father's teachings and consolidated the fledgling Western Baha'i community. After returning from his journey, Abdul Baha continued corresponding with American Baha'is, eventually addressing to them a series of letters, or tablets, charging the believers with the task of spreading the religion worldwide. These letters were compiled together in the book Tablets of the Divine Plan. After Abdul Baha's death in 1921, his grandson Shoghi Effendi became the guardian of the religion, and continued to encourage and direct the efforts of the American Baha'i community. In 1925, the first National Spiritual Assembly of the United States was formed in conjunction with the Baha'is of Canada. In 1936, Shoghi Effendi asked believers to begin the systematic implementation of Abdul Baha's vision of teaching the faith worldwide, calling for American pioneers to assist in establishing Baha'i communities in the republics of Latin America. Later coordinated efforts, such as the Ten Year Crusade from 1953 to 63, would see American pioneers sent to a wide variety of locations around the globe. In 1944, it was reported that every state in the United States now had at least one local spiritual assembly, and the national Baha'i population was estimated at 4,800. As of 2011, official estimates had risen to 175,000 Baha'is in the 48 contiguous states, with some external estimates as high as 525,000. <laughs> Early mentions The first mention of events related to the history of the religion in the United States appears to be the 1845-6 echo of the November 1845 London Times story relating events of the Bab upon return from pilgrimage, whom Baha'is hold as a direct precursor akin to the relationship between John the Baptist and Jesus. In America this was printed in April 1846 in the Boone Lick Times based on an article in the NY Mirror. A mention in 1850 followed. The first academic paper on the religion was a letter written to the American Oriental Society which was holding its meeting in Boston and the Library of Materials was held at the Boston Athenaeum. The letter was originally published as part of the Minutes of the Society in the Literary World of June 14, 1851, as an untitled entry whose first quote is, "...notice of a singular character, who has for some years past played a prominent part on the stage of Persian life." Dated February 10, 1851 by Dr. Rev. Austin H. Wright. It was subsequently also published in a Vermont newspaper June 26, 1851. In 1893 Rev. Henry Harris Jessup addressed the World Parliament of Religions in Chicago with the first mention the Baha'i Faith itself in the United States, and published in the Chicago Inter-Ocean and Manuscript. Anton Haddad, the first Baha'i to come to America was already in the country. First community Following Haddad, Ibrahim George Kerala came to the U.S. and settled in New York where he began trying to teaching truth seeker classes. He visited Charles Augustus Briggs and others, as well as the Syrian community in New York however in 1894 Kerala moved on to Chicago following the interest fostered by the world's Columbian Exposition's World Parliament of Religions. One of the early converts while Kerala was in Chicago was Thornton Chase, who had read the presentation about the Baha'is at the exposition, and is generally considered the first Baha'i convert in the West. Other individuals had converted, but none remained members of the religion. Later students of Kerala's included Howard McNutt, who would later compile the Promulgation of Universal Peace, a prominent collection of the addresses of Abdul Baha during his journeys in America. Both men were designated as Disciples of Abdul Baha and Heralds of the Covenant. 
by Shoghi Effendi. Another student of the classes and disciple was Lua Getzinger, designated as the mother teacher of the West. Another who passed the class and joined the religion was the maverick Honoré Jackson. Kerala moved once again, to Kenosha, Wisconsin, in 1895, where a large Baha'i community soon developed. In 1898, Kerala undertook a Baha'i pilgrimage to Palestine to meet Abdul Baha with other American pilgrims, including Phoebe Hurst, Lua Getzinger, and joined by May Bowles. Kerala began making claims of independent leadership and Abdul Baha sent, first, Anton Haddad with a letter contesting the definition of leadership, then Kerala's initial teacher of the religion, Abdul Karim I. Tiharani, to confront him. The conflict made the newspapers. Ultimately unwilling to follow the leadership of Abdul Baha, he was declared a covenant breaker. Green Acre. Meanwhile, to the east, Sarah Farmer had founded Green Acre following the enthusiasm of the same parliament as a summer center of cross-religion gatherings and cultural development. She had success attracting investors, most especially Phoebe Hurst, but by the end of 1899 things were in crisis. According to scholar Eric Lee Schmidt various people involved were trying to take Green Acre in various directions and threatened the shutdown of the program's creditors were nervous, and her business partners had thought to force Farmer to sell out. While her partners were seeking to meet with her, Farmer was a guest already aboard the SS First Bismarck the first week of January 1900. During the voyage Farmer and Wilson met friends and learned they were on the way to see Abdul Baha and were asked to come along. Wilson was dubious but eventually the ladies changed their plans and went along, before leaving for Haifa March 23, 1900. After converting to the religion on meeting Abdul Baha Farmer returned to America and began settings plans for the 1901 session at Green Acre. Mirza Abul Fadl, among the most scholarly trained Baha'is of the time, accompanied Anton Haddad returning to America and arrived for the 1901 season. Ali Kuli Khan, to serve as his translator, arrived in the United States in June. They had been sent by Abdul Baha. The later well-known Baha'i Agnes Baldwin Alexander, later appointed to a high office of the religion, was also there. Out of this the community of Baha'is began to form in Boston. Farmer and Abdul Baha began an active exchange of letters some 20 plus of his which were gathered and printed initially in 1909 and then the third edition in 1919. Topic. Continued development. That America went through a civil war and achieved progress toward an emancipation of its black people is pointed at by Abdul Baha in 1912 as a basis of encouraging respect for America in its support for humanitarian and altruistic ideals. An appeal to the U.S. for humanitarian interest goes as far back as 1867 when Baha'is wrote a petition to the U.S. Congress because it held no attachment to the present oppressive conditions in Persia. Baha'u'llah did himself address the rulers of America and the presidents of the republics," saying in part, "...bind ye the broken with the hands of justice, and crush the oppressor who flourisheth with the rod of the commandments of your Lord." Baha'is also used diplomatic means to seek redress or relief. When the American community was only at most roughly 2000, in 1901 American Baha'is approached then U.S. Ambassador to Iran Herbert W. Bowen in Paris concerning the situation of Baha'is in Persia. As an example, even an American diplomat was murdered in 1924 by a mob on suspicion of being a Baha'i intervening in a local matter. In 1906, a government census reported through a scholar that there were 1280 Baha'is in 24 places among 14 states. Early Baha'is in this period included reformers and artists like Stanwood Cobb, Louis G. Gregory, and Juliet Thompson. Laura Clifford Barney interviewed Abdul Baha on several teachings of the religion resulting in the early publication some answered questions. The Baha'i Temple Unity was incorporated in Chicago at a national convention in 1909 to facilitate the establishment of the first Baha'i House of Worship in the West. Thirty-nine delegates from 36 cities attended. Star of the West was the first large periodical production in the country beginning in March, 1910. Thornton Chase scholar Robert Stockman underscores Chase' importance as an early North American Baha'i thinker, publicist, administrator, and organizer who is still underappreciated, that, 
He is perhaps the only person in America before 1912 who had a thorough understanding of the Baha'i concept of consultation. Chase was the prime mover behind many of the Chicago's early institutional activities and in many ways his sudden death left a gap in the North American Baha'i community that remained unfilled until the rise to prominence in the early 1920s of Horace Hawley, the chief developer of Baha'i organization in the United States and Canada, backquote Abdul Baha, while head of the religion, visited the United States and Canada, ultimately visiting some 40 cities, to once again spread his father's teachings. He arrived in New York City on the 11th of April 1912. While he spent most of his time in New York, he visited many cities on the East Coast. Then in August he started a more extensive journey across America to the West Coast before returning east at the end of October. On 5 December 1912 he set sail back to Europe from New York. During his nine months in North America, he met with many well-known people as well as hundreds of American and Canadian Baha'is who were recent converts to the religion. Accomplishments during the trip include setting examples of the core values of the religion, unity of humanity, and gender equality. First he demonstrated an advanced race consciousness by glorifying diversity and black individuals on multiple occasions when racial segregation in the United States was the usual practice. And second, extending the progress of the equality of women and men. During his stay in America the lead all-male assembly was dissolved in favor of an integrated one of women and men. After his return to Palestine in 1913, Abdul Baha mentioned various lands around the world in which the religion should be introduced, predicted the imminence of World War I, and elaborated the qualities of those who seek to serve the religion. This guidance took the form of a series of letters, or tablets, to the followers of the religion in the United States in 1916-1917. These letters were compiled together in the book Tablets of the Divine Plan. They were translated and presented on April 4, 1919 in New York City, and published in Star of the West on December 12, 1919. Urbain Ledoux also joined the religion about this time. The worldwide activity of Martha Root, who circled the globe three times teaching the faith, was catalyzed by these tablets. Backquote Abdul Baha died in November 1921. In his will he appointed his grandson Shoghi Effendi as the guardian and leader of the religion. A few in America questioned the appointment as early as 1926. Another division occurred because many were attracted to the personality of Abdul Baha and saw the religion as an ecumenical society to which all persons of good will, regardless of religion, might join. When Shoghi Effendi made clear the position that the Baha'i faith was an independent religion with its own distinct administration through local and national spiritual assemblies, a few felt that he had overstepped the bounds of his authority. Some who actively and continuously caused disunity were expelled by Shoghi Effendi as covenant breakers. All of the divisions in this period were short lived and restricted in their influence, for the most part, failing to last beyond the lives of their initial dissidents. Systematic development While the first Baha'i House of Worship of the Americas began taking form in Chicago, national institutional development of the religion shifted to Green Acre for some decades. The Star of the West was replaced with the Baha'i News in 1924 and supplemented by the magazine World Order in 1935. The first National Spiritual Assembly was elected in 1925 after years of increasing organizational development. See statistics on National Spiritual Assemblies. Individuals in a number of social situations joined the religion, Alain Leroy Locke, James Ferdinand Morton Jr., Robert Sengstacki Abbott, Helen Elsie Austin, and Nancy Douglas Bowditch. Additionally, two more institutions were established like Green Acre, the Geyserville School that later moved to become the Bosch Baha'i School and the Lulan Baha'i School. Shoghi Effendi, head of the religion after the death of Abdul Baha, wrote a cable on May 1, 1936 to the Baha'i Annual Convention of the United States and Canada, and asked for the systematic implementation of Abdul Baha's vision to begin. In his cable he wrote, Appeal to assembled delegates ponder historic appeal voiced by Abdul Baha in Tablets of the Divine Plan. Urge earnest deliberation with incoming National Assembly to ensure its complete fulfillment. First century of Baha'i era drawing to a close. Humanity entering outer fringes most perilous stage its existence. Opportunities of present hour unimaginably precious. 
Would to God every state within American Republic and every republic in American continent might ere termination of this glorious century embrace the light of the faith of Baha'u'llah and establish structural basis of his world order. Following the May 1 cable, another cable from Shoghi Effendi came on May 19 calling for permanent pioneers to be established in all the countries of South American and the Caribbean. The 1936 religious census conducted by the United States government reported 2,584 Baha'is and by 1944 every state in the nation had at least one local Baha'i administrative body called a spiritual assembly, and a population of about 4,800 Baha'is was reported. During that period the Baha'i National Spiritual Assembly of the United States and Canada appointed the Inter-America Committee to take charge of the preparations for international pioneers. In the fall, amidst the rebuilding of the economy in the Great Depression and the build-up to World War II a special collection and printing of the scriptural guidance to America was given to President Franklin Roosevelt, "...that these utterances may, in this hour of grave crisis, bring to him comfort, encouragement and strength." During the 1937 Baha'i North American Convention, Shoghi Effendi cabled advising the convention to prolong their deliberations to permit the delegates and the National Assembly to consult on a plan that would enable Baha'is to go to Latin America as well as to include the completion of the outer structure of the Baha'i House of Worship in Wilmette, Illinois. In 1937 the first seven-year plan 1937 an international plan designed by Shoghi Effendi, gave the American Baha'is the goal of establishing the Baha'i faith in in every country in Latin America. In 1937 there was essentially no presence of the religion from Central America South, and 11 states and provinces in the U.S. and Canada had no Baha'is at all, 34 lacked spiritual assemblies. In 1938 Baha'i communities and local spiritual assemblies began to form across Latin America with the spread of American Baha'is, while inside the United States individuals like Guy Murchie, Robert Hayden, Robert B. Powers, joined the religion and others who were raised in the religion achieved increasing levels of service in it like Marion Hawley and Dorothy Beecher Baker or otherwise became more well known in the world like Bernard Leach, Carol Lombard, Barbara Hale, Lois Hall and William Sears. In April 1953 the Baha'i House of Worship Wilmette, Illinois, was formally dedicated. Up to 1944, delegates to the National Convention were selected based on local assemblies. In 1944 they were elected on the basis of statewide regional conventions of Baha'is. In 1947, at a time when the Baha'is number approaching 5,000 in America, Baha'i students at the University of Chicago participated in a demonstration against the segregation and discrimination based on race for medical treatment of students on campus. In 1955 American Baha'is and institutions spoke up following the destruction of a Baha'i center of worship in Iran. Later coordinated efforts, such as the Ten-Year Crusade, would see American pioneers sent to a wide variety of locations around the globe, such as Africa, some parts of Eastern Asia, parts of Oceania, Polynesia filling out the list of first Baha'is to settle in a country via the Knights of Baha'u'llah, as well as among its own Native Americans' populations. As a result the cultural norms in the Baha'i faith went through major transitions. The first occurred at about the turn of the 20th century when the religion became known beyond its mainly Muslim Middle Eastern population and spread to Christian North America and Europe. The second major breakthrough started post-World War II when the religion began to spread rapidly in the villages of the Third World. A stated purpose for the coordinating committees appointed to oversee the process was to facilitate a shift in the balance of roles from North American leading guidance and Latin cooperation to Latin leading guidance and North American cooperation. The process was well underway by 1950 and was to be enforced about 1953. In Africa it was emphasized that Western pioneers be self-effacing and focus their efforts not on the colonial leadership but on the native Africans, and that the pioneers must show by actions the sincerity of their sense of service to the Africans in bringing the religion and then the Africans who understand their new religion are to be given freedom to rise up and spread the religion according to their own sensibilities and the pioneers to disperse or step into the background. Similar practices were undertaken by Australians arriving in Papua New Guinea. Unlike the spread of Christianity within Indian country in the United States, the Baha'i faith has never been associated with a fortification of colonial occupation, Euro-American assimilation, or forced conversions of Native Americans. Indeed in 1960 Hand of the Cause Rui Kanem asked for forgiveness for the injustices her race had done and praised their great past. 
and in 1963 anthropologist Alice Beck Kyo, a well-known researcher of Native Americans, observed that, "...the Baha'i faith does not deny the validity of Native Indian beliefs, and appeals to many Indians who are seeking a religion that is neither exclusively Indian nor dominated by white values and customs." Though while the religion was growing the challenge of broadening respect also continued to be a point of engagement, Shoghi Effendi had died November 4, 1957, without explicitly appointing a successor, however he had appointed hands of the cause, individuals of highly distinguished service to the religion. He began by appointing some posthumously, from the United States so appointed were Keith Ransom Keller 1876-1933, Martha Root 1872-1939, Roy C. Wilhelm 1875 to 1951 and Louis George Gregory 1874 to 1951 Americans living for their appointments included in order of their appointment waves from 1951 Dorothy Beecher Baker 1898 to 1954 Amelia Engelder Collins 1873 to 1962 Horace Hotchkiss Holly 1887 to 1960 Leroy CIOAs 1896 to 1965 Charles Mason Remy 1874 to 1974 from 1952 Corinne Knight True 1861 to 1961 in 1957 Agnes Baldwin Alexander 1875 to 1971 and William Sears 1911 to 1992 They along with the hands appointed from other lands on November 25th signed a unanimous proclamation organizing the community to fulfilling his goals Among these were that the entire body of the hands of the cause shall determine when and how the International Baha'i Council shall pass through the successive stages outlined by Shoghi Effendi culminating in the election of the Universal House of Justice that the authority to expel violators from the faith shall be vested in the body of nine hands the custodians, acting on reports and recommendations submitted by hands from their respective continents. Upon the election of the Universal House of Justice at the culmination of the Ten Year Crusade in 1963, the Nine Hands acting as interim head of the religion closed their office. The world community celebrated the election at the First Baha'i World Congress. There was another attempt at a division contesting the lack of another guardian but it also failed to be sustained. Baha'is in the United States numbered almost 7,000 by 1956. By 1963 membership exceeded 10,000, and were increasing by about 1,200 per year. In the midst of the period leading directly to the election Baha'is in Morocco had organized their first assembly and begun to suffer persecution. In 1963 the arrest of Baha'is in Morocco had gotten attention from King Hassan II of Morocco, U.S. Senator Kenneth B. Keating and Roger Nash Baldwin, then chairman of the International League for the Rights of Man. On March 31, 1963 during a visit to the United States and the United Nations, King Hassan was interviewed on television on Meet the Press, then with Lawrence E. Spivak, and was asked about the treatment of Baha'is in his own country. He addressed the audience saying that the Baha'i faith was not a religion and "...against good order and also morals." However, on April 2 he makes a public statement that if the Supreme Court confirms the penalty of death that he would grant them a royal pardon. However, on November 23 the Supreme Court heard the appeals and reversed the decision of the lower court. On December 13 the prisoners were actually released. In 1964 a project developed among the Baha'is supporting race unity, the same period as the Freedom Summer Campaign, with connections at Lulin and the burgeoning Baha'i community of Greenville, South Carolina. School integration was going to happen that fall. Training sessions for a project were noted in the Baha'i News in August at Lulin. Some 80 youth attended the training in mid-June and some 26 faculty and staff. After the classes in various subjects 27 went to eight locations, Greenville, South Carolina, Atlanta, Georgia, locations in MN, NM, AS, ME and DC. Six youth went to Greenville, South Carolina, under the sponsorship of their local assembly for a six-week program joined by five local youth. They worked on tutoring some 55 black students about to attend newly integrating schools, rural proclamation of the religion, and human rights activities focused on the black minority. The work was capped with a parent-teacher banquet reception at a church and a picnic for the students conducted by the Baha'i teachers. 
Firesides were held widely in rural areas around Greenville which featured singing, and the group supported petitioning for the public swimming pool being integrated. In 1965 Baha'is participated in the Selma to Montgomery marches and arranged for telegrams according to the June issue of Baha'i News. The National Assembly telegrammed the U.S. President and the Southern Christian Leadership Conference. Eight Baha'is including two from Montgomery are documented to have participated. The news in 1971 was that the national count of Baha'is had doubled. The Christian Century noted that in a one month, 13 county teaching conference based in Dillon, South Carolina, 9,000 converts, most of them black, joined the Baha'i faith, sick, with hundreds more signing declaration cards in similar efforts throughout the South. The state with the single largest Baha'i population was now South Carolina, at around 77,000 members in America. In 1982, Baha'is testified before a Congress subcommittee on the situation in Iran following the Islamic Revolution, and this was followed up a couple years later, and again in 1988. Meanwhile, the accelerated growth of the worldwide community in the 1960s to 1980s yielded a challenge for the social and economic development of communities. According to the Baha'i teachings, development should increase people's self-reliance, communal solidarity, giving access to knowledge, and, where possible, removing sources of injustice. Spiritual, moral and material development should be linked together. These priorities are envisioned as crucial to the development of world peace. The religion entered a new phase of activity when a message of the Universal House of Justice dated 20 October 1983 was released. The Office of Social and Economic Development was established and Baha'is were urged to seek out ways, compatible with the Baha'i teachings, in which they could become involved in the social and economic development of the communities in which they lived. Worldwide in 1979 there were 129 officially recognized Baha'i socio-economic development projects. By 1987, the number of officially recognized development projects had increased to 1482. The Americas as a total held a significant percentage of these. Some examples in the United States In 1984 the Center for Interracial Understanding was established in the summer of 1984 at Lulin. Another project called a residential college, was founded at Lulin in September 1985, and was part of its conception. It was announced in March 1986 it was accepting applications for the September 1986 enrollment combining formal study of the religion with a degree earning study at one or two nearby colleges. Students would live and work at the school, receive training, and go to one of these schools. A temporary effort was that of Tucson Baha'is aid for 1985 Mexico City earthquake, as there was during and following Hurricane Hugo. Another programs was for youth called the Baha'i Youth Workshop founded by Oscar DeGruy in 1974, that had groups organize and perform variously in the United States. 1996 was the beginning of the implementation of the Multi-Racial Unity Living Experience project by Richard Thomas and Jean Gazel at Michigan State University, in the wake of the O.J. Simpson murder case in October 1995. Thomas was approached by then Provost Lou Anna Simon of MSU to have a means of resolving racial tensions in the midst of increasing diversity on campus. The Tahira Justice Center was founded in 1997 for individuals seeking protection from human rights abuses. <laughs> <laughs> Modern community In December 1999, the National Spiritual Assembly of the United States stated that out of approximately 140,000 adult 15 and over members on the rolls, only 70,000 had known addresses, and another estimate was of 137,000 plus Iranian refugees. Nearly 17% of U.S. Baha'is still reported still being international pioneers, while some 35% indicated homefront pioneering experience inside the United States to places the religion had not previously had a presence. The American Religious Identity Survey conducted in 2001, with a sample size of 50,000, estimated that there were 84,000 self-identifying adult Baha'is in the United States. The Association of Religion Data Archives estimated there were some 525,000 Baha'is in 2005 however internal counts in February 2011 show 175,000 excluding Alaska and Hawaii. 
With developmental roots back into the 19th century, the Ruhi Institute, an educational institution initially operating under the guidance of the National Spiritual Assembly of the Baha'i Faith in Colombia but has been applied in the United States and studied. The goal is of involving more individuals in study leading to action. A focus of the institute is to couple an evolving appreciation of virtues with processes of community development. After some decades of development, Baha'i leadership adopted it as a key component of the evolving nature of Baha'i life. Although a majority of Americans are Christians, Baha'is make up the second largest religious group in South Carolina as of May 2014. And based on data from 2010, Baha'is were the largest minority religion in 80 counties out of the 3,143 counties in the country. From the same 2010 data set, the largest populations of Baha'is at the county by county level are in Los Angeles, California, Palm Beach, FL, Harris County, Texas, and Cook County, IL. However on a basis relative to the local population the highest relative density is in South Carolina and Bennett County, South Dakota, especially near the Pine Ridge and Rosebud Indian Reservations, and Georgia. While early fictional works relating the religion occurred in Europe a number of them have appeared in the United States since the 1980s, sometimes in mass media, see Baha'i Faith in Fiction. Major centers Greater Boston The Baha'i Faith in Greater Boston, a combined statistical area, has had glimpses of the religion in the 19th century arising to its first community of religionists at the turn of the century. Early newspapers on the precursor Babi religion were followed by a paper by Dr. Rev. Austin H. Wright as an untitled entry whose first quote is Notice of a singular character, who has for some years past played a prominent part on the stage of Persian life, dated February 10, 1851. It is considered the first paper giving an account on Babism. Circa 1900 the community began to coalesce being near to Green Acre. From then on the institution would progressively be associated with Baha'is, a place where both locals and people from afar came to learn of the religion, and who officially took over controlling interest from 1913. Leaders rising to national prominence with a national level of organization soon arose after Abdul Baha, then head of the religion, traveled through the area. Most prominent were from the area were Harlan Ober, William Henry Randall, and Alfred E. Lunt. Broadening recognitions of the community sometimes took the form of publicly noting their persecution in Morocco and then Iran, and presence in local concerts and fairs. In 1988 the National Assembly of the United States picked Boston among its four foci for expansion of the religion and a conference of some 800 Baha'is gathered. The modern community, albeit a tiny fraction of the wider population, is present in some concentrations and thin areas throughout the greater Boston area. Over the last couple decades, it has been systematically pursuing programs of neighborhood community building activities of study circles, children's classes, junior youth groups, and devotional meetings among the activities and observances of the religion. <laughs> South Carolina The Baha'i faith in South Carolina begins in the transition from Jim Crow to the civil rights movement but defines another approach to the problem, and proceeded according to its teachings. The first mention in relation to the history of the religion came in the 1860s in a newspaper article. Following this the first individual from South Carolina to find the religion was Louis Gregory in 1909, followed by individuals inside the state. Communities of Baha'is were soon operating in North Augusta, Columbia and Greenville struggled with segregation culture through the 1950s externally and internally. However, in the 1969-1973 period, a very remarkable and somewhat unsustainable period of conversions to the religion on the basis of a meeting of Christian and Baha'i religious ideas established a basis of community across several counties, notably Marion, Williamsburg, and Dillon, served by the Lewis Gregory Institute and its radio station WLGI but also across the wider area. That community continues and has gathered news coverage as part of the second largest religion in South Carolina. Alaska 
Alaska is unusual in that it is not an independent nation, recognized by the United Nations, and yet has a national spiritual assembly. Its specific statistics are not published, and are often not broken out in non-Baha'i statistics of the USA in general. There are currently about 1,500 Baha'is in Alaska. <laughs> Hawaii The Baha'i community in Hawaii had its origins when Hawaiian-born Agnes Alexander, who became a Baha'i in Paris in 1900, returned to the islands in 1901. Similar to Alaska, the Baha'is of Hawaii have an independent national spiritual assembly from that of the USA, though it is itself one of the 50 United States. Independent statistics have not been published. Notable American Baha'is Outside the religion in general society prominent Baha'is have been social and civic leaders Alain Leroy Locke, Patricia Locke, Dorothy Wright Nelson and Lely Miller Murrow, entertainers Seals and Crofts, Dizzy Gillespie, Rain Wilson, Andy Grammer and among academics Suhel Bushrui, and Dwight W. Allen. See list of Baha'is for many other Baha'is that have Wikipedia articles about them, and more generally category, American Baha'is. Such prominence does not connote authority or priority within the religion but simply a degree of public recognition. William Sears was a sports commentator and television personality, and Louis Gregory was a prominent African-American lawyer, and both become prominent inside the religion as hands of the cause and Locke and Nelson were elected to the National Spiritual Assembly. <laughs> 